Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta and Marta from You've Got Five Options. It's a surprise today. We are live first time without Anna because Anna, she had a surgery yesterday and she's recovering. You guys don't need to worry. She is fine. She just needs to have a little bit of time to recover so she cannot be here at the studio, but she will call us in if we are lucky. So looking forward to receiving that call today from Anna. And else, it's a You've Got Five Options live show. And we have a really exciting guest today, Claudia Adamiec. Hello, Claudia. Hello, Marta. It's so nice to have you here. And we have an amazing topic today. It is so. Kiss your social life goodbye. You're an entrepreneur now with Claudia Adamiec and You've Got Five Options. So it's a hot topic, really interesting one, and we have a lot to talk about. But before we talk exactly about that topic, we are, of course, going to talk about Claudia a little bit. So, Claudia, tell us, who are you? Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me. And it's a shame Anna is not here with us. But all the best to you, Anna, if you're listening. I hope you're going to get better soon, and I hope to see you soon. Um, yeah, so thank you, Martha, for, for having me here today. Who is Claudia? Claudia is um, a personal trainer, health coach, and a fitness instructor. Um, she's 27. She's been self-employed for almost a year now. And I actually switched my corporate career um, into the, the fitness field. So that has been an exciting journey for, for the past couple of months. And we will surely talk about that journey uh, a little bit today. And when we first, uh, when we first uh, came to uh, to discuss with Claudia, what are the topics we could discuss? There were so many. Yes, <laughs> because that's true. You, you can hear that Claudia is a, has a great potential for so many different topics. But we have selected one that people don't usually talk so much about, and yet it's so important the social life uh, when you're so busy yeah. starting your uh, your own company. So thank you so much for agreeing to talk uh, about this topic uh, with us here today. But yeah, let's talk a little bit about Claudia. Do you recall how we met? Yes, we met in January, I think. You guys had this event in the bar um, that was about New Year's resolution, kind of, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and I knew Anna from before. We we met a couple of months before that. And then I saw on Facebook that you guys had this um, this amazing event. And uh, I, I remember coming in late because I had some fitness classes earlier that day, um, that afternoon. Um, so that that's that's how we met, isn't it? Yeah, we we met on that show. And actually, yeah. and actually, when you came in. Mm -hmm. You came in this time when we were talking about life purpose. Yes. And uh, you were, of course, uh, so brave <laughs> to yeah. actually share your journey just right there on spot being spontaneous and sharing yeah. with a group of people uh, your story. Yeah. So uh, that's really great. Uh, thank you so much for doing that. Trust and me, my heart was like bumping like so much. I was kind of like, you know. Excited to share it, but at the same time, I was stressing out a little bit. Yeah, but this story is so inspirational. So tell Thank us you. a little bit this journey from a corporate employee yeah. to an entrepreneur. Should I start from like beginning, beginning or? No, like, you know, <laughs> this this moment, how you decided yeah. that you want okay. to quit your entrepreneur, uh, you want to quit your corporate, corporate job. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, um, I have... I, I was working in an office environment for about four years after graduating. And, um, and you know, I, 
I switched. I was. I, I think I switched in between like three different companies, starting from a small one to a medium sized and to a, like a very big international one, because I always wanted to to grow. I want always wanted to have more tasks and and, and develop. Um, so I always I was always looking for more. But wherever I went, I was like, this is not it. I don't like it as much as I think I should like it. So I always, I was always trying to look for something else. And um, and then the last job that I had, I really didn't enjoy it. Even um, even my friends were like, this is not the Claudia we know. Like like there's no life in you anymore. There's no energy. And I really really hated sitting in that you know on that desk in that office and, and staring at the computer. The only thing I was doing all day long was looking at the time, when am I going to leave? When am I going to go to the gym and, and train people and or work out, you know, on my own? So, you know, there was one moment when when I came home, I actually was working 100 kilometers away from Aarhus. So I also had to commute, spend some time on commuting every day, about two, two and a half hours every day. So on top of not me liking the job, I also had to spend so much time, you know, driving and, and that was killing me. So one day I came home and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I hate it. And luckily, my boyfriend asked me, why don't you quit? And I'm like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> like, quit and do what? Like, well, you can either be unemployed for a while and look what's something that you really want to do. And in my head, I'm like, no, that is a loser. You cannot be unemployed, you know. Or you can start working with fitness full time. And I'm like, how can you live off fitness? And he's like, well, you can do a combination of personal training and classes. And, you know, somehow you po- probably get enough hours to, to live off that. And I'm like, no, this is crazy. Like, what am I going to tell my parents? I'm quitting this good, well-paid job to work at a gym because that's how it actually sounds to my parents, you know? What am I going to say to my friends and my sister? And, you know, all these, like, fears. And I'm like, no, I can't do that. And how are we going to survive? My boyfriend just went back to school. So we already cut down, like, the two full-time salaries to one salary. And, And I'm like, no, this is impossible. But I slept on it. And then the next day I woke up and I'm like, actually... I'm not supposed to leave to make my parents happy or my friends happy. It's my life and I'm definitely not happy. You know, my boyfriend was like, you're always grumpy, you're always tired, you come home late, you get pissed at me if I forget to wash my cup, you know. And we never spend time together, you never have time for yourself, for for friends, for family, you know. Why wouldn't you give it a shot and try? So I slept on it, I woke up the next day and I'm like, all right, let me do it. I went to work, I started writing the the resignation letter. And you know, like, you get stomach pain and your hands are shaking and your heart is like, you know, about to jump out of your chest. And then my phone vibrated and I got a notification and I'm like, all right, let me check. So I checked my phone. You know, for those who have LinkedIn profiles, you get these newsletters like every, I don't, I don't even know how often, every week or every month. Um, where it simply says there are 632 job opportunities in your area. So when I was about to send that email to my boss, I got this newsletter on my phone and I opened it and I simply smiled because I'm like, okay, if it's not that job or if it's not fitness, there are 653 job opportunities in my area. I'm going to figure it out. And I pressed the set button and I had the biggest smile ever. So then I had like four weeks where I still had to work. But these four weeks I spent simply on, you know, taking pictures, building my website, talking to people, networking, finding out what to do, how to rent a place that where I could train with people, how to get clients, how to sell myself, you know, all of this, um, all of these topics. So, so far, I think it's been one of the best decisions I've ever, de- I've ever done in my life, I've ever taken in my life. It's such a great inspiration. And Thank I've you. heard that story already several times. Yeah. And every time I get goosebumps and every time really? I'm like, wow, you're such an inspiration. And it, it really takes courage to, you know, yeah. to take that decision. And I love it that you shared your fears 
with us and that you are honest, that it's not an yeah. easy decision. No, and, not at all. And that you've had also your not doubts and you've had, you know, what will I tell my parents and yep. what will I tell my friends? And you've had, you know, you had to go through it all. So thank you yeah. so much for being so honest and authentic in your story. Thank you. And I would like to ask you uh, that question that we love asking here. Yes. What's your life purpose, Claudia? My life purpose? Well... The reason how I actually started training, if you met me like six years ago, I would never open the door to the gym. Me and walking out, uh -uh, that was a no-go. But I went to Greece for my internship during my studies. And you know, Greece, they have really, really nice food. They got this amazing cheese and, and this souvlaki, it's like this kebab with French fries, it's so good. And I was also living with a Greek girl. She was a very big fan of food, but she was also very active. Diving, swimming, running, cycling, training. So I kept eating as much as she was, but I wasn't training at all. So during three months, I gained like seven or eight kilos. And then I came back and my lovely grandfather told me that I looked like a pig with the extra weight on. And, uh, but that's fine. He's a very honest man. And that kind of motivated me, you know, to like, okay, I need to do something about it because I definitely hated the person I saw in the mirror. I didn't like the way I looked. My clothes wouldn't fit anymore. I lost the self-confidence that I once had. And it was a tough period, you know, like you're in the skin of someone that you really don't like. You don't want to look in the mirror anymore. And, you know, it, I felt horrible. So I started going to the gym, I started running and, you know, slowly I lost the, the weight that I gained. And of course, with, with the healthy diet and eating and, and taking care of, you know, the, the whole combination of eating and training. But why I decided to become a trainer and work with people is because I know a lot of people, especially women, um, are facing the same problems. Um, you know, they, because of the way how they look, they might not feel as comfortable or as self-confident as they could be if they had a nice, slim or fit body. So my purpose in life is actually helping women to get the self-confidence that would help them get the career they want or the men they want or, you know, the education, whatever it is in their lives but help them get that self-confidence, help them feel good about themselves, help them look good and, and, and be happy and, and like the person they see in the mirror. So, so I think through training and, and coaching, I am able to, to help women. And I mainly want to work with women because I feel like I'm a woman myself and it's easier for me to understand where they're coming from and what's their story, you know. Women and men are, are coded way differently. Like, so so I, I feel like I, I can understand the woman way, way better. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Uh, that's a really uh, great, good and in-depth uh, you know, uh, explanation yes. of your life purpose. So <laughs> I, I felt like I needed to, to share the beginning, like to, to explain why. It's very good. Yeah. Very, very good. Thank now you. we really understand. So now we will move uh, to the second part of our uh, show today. So uh, hopefully we can have uh, Anna calling us in for this part. Um, looking forward to that. Same here. But uh, we are now going to talk about kissing your social life goodbye yes. as you're an entrepreneur now. And... Uh, we have prepared five facts mm -hmm. uh, and we would like to hear uh, your reflection uh, on that fact. And if Anna also uh, calls us, uh, hopefully she can also share her um, perspective on that. So the first fact, an 80 hours working week is normal when you're an entrepreneur. Is that your reality, Claudia? Yes, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So I do not train for 80 hours. Yeah. For mm. sure. But, you know, everything else, like taking care of your social media, sales, you know, administration, all of that. Sometimes I think it might even be more than 80 hours a week. 
Okay. Yeah. So it is uh, a very, uh, very accurate um, I would expression. say so, yes. Okay, great. Second fact, entrepreneurs rarely go out. Is it true or false? I definitely go out less than I used to. I'm not sure if it's caused by the fact that I'm self-employed right now. I'm not sure. I think it's um first of all I'm 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 older, you know. I don't enjoy going out three times a week anymore. Um and I try to I really try to have my like Saturday and Sunday off. I really try to. It doesn't always work out, but I really try to to have that time to relax and, and you know, recharge my batteries. Um but I, th- I think it also depends on, on the job you have. Like, for me, people don't train after three o'clock Friday, you know, which is an advantage for me because I don't need to work. Um, but sometimes when I do have this free evening, you know, I'm like, ah, let me just check this on my computer or let me do this or let me finish this poster or, you know. So, but I think you are able to find time to go out it just really depends on on your attitude. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now the third fact: dating. What's that? <laughs> so there is this, uh, you know, saying that if you're an entrepreneur, you don't really have the time for dating, going out, relationship, and so on. How do you find that? Well, I think I'm kind of lucky because I am in a relationship. And I became self-employed because of my partner, right? He was kind of the one who, who kind of pushed me and gave me that kick that I needed. Um, so I don't I don't have that problem. We live together, so we see each other not so often because it's mainly in the morning and in the evening, but we still still see each other and then we got, we got the weekends. Um, he's also a very busy man. So we do not go out on dates as often as we used to. But maybe also because it was like, you know, the first year and, you know, you go out more often. Um, It depends. If you're really into your business and really into your, you know, your dream and your goal, it might be tough finding time on dating, especially if you're not in a relationship. And then, you know, the whole process of like going out on the first date and chatting and you know like ah do I really like him do I want to go on a second date I think it does take some some time so it I believe for people who are self-employed or who just started it might be difficult to to spend time on the love life yeah well when we looked at the fact one and you did say that you work 80 hours a week which is twice as much as uh, when you work in a uh, in a corporate uh, yeah. environment. I mean, of course, in a corporate environment, you can also be of in a course. position where, yeah, you, yeah. where you work that much. Yeah. But it does seem like squeezing in a dating life uh, might be quite a challenge. Yes. Okay. Fact number four. People change the way they talk to you. So they assume that uh, because you have this, you know, new career, you're this personal trainer and so on, and uh, because they know you, they can get things for free from you. Yes. So have you encountered those situations? Um, yes, but not as many. I think it's actually more my Instagram followers than friends Yeah. asking me for advices and, oh, can we train or, you know, like, how do I lose weight? Can you give me a program? I think it's actually more the followers who ask for free stuff. And um, I did help a couple of friends. And of course, they they offered to pay. But you feel uncomfortable, like, ah, I'm not going to take money from my friend, you know. Yeah, that was the follow up question. Like, you know, is it difficult (laughs) to say no or ask for money from people, Um, you know? I think it's it's a very, very sensitive subject, I would say. You don't want to take money from your friends because it's your friend or your family, you know. But at the same time, you need to value your work because especially at the beginning, you do a lot of stuff for free. And then, you know, you got five friends coming and and that is a lot of free stuff to give away. 
But at the same time, I feel like when people get free staff, they are not so... If it comes to training, let's say, they might not be as motivated as if they paid for it. Yeah, I have encountered that uh, <laughs> with coaching. Yeah. Uh, that when I have been uh, for for studying, yeah, yeah. When, uh, when doing my coaching certificate, I have offered free coaching and it is reality when people are offered something for free. Some of them will not be as committed no. as the ones who pay for it. So in general, I think it's the same, yeah. uh, very similar with training yeah. and coaching that people simply value. Yeah. Uh, first of all, when they come to you themselves. Second of all, if they pay for something, yeah. they want to take uh, a better advantage of it. Of uh, course. So it is a reality. Uh, so, um, yeah, that must be uh, similar here. Yeah, there's something about it. Yeah, but on the other hand, I agree. Uh, asking for money from friends or colleagues is a very... It's very uncomfortable, yeah, right? Very sensitive subject. Yeah. So uh, you have to find your balance because I agree if you never take money either, then when are you supposed to... Exactly. How are you going to make a living? Yeah. So nice, uh, nice subject for finding balance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. And the last fact is that no entrepreneur is an island. So that's a very, uh, I can see confusion on your yes. face, Claudia. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, so basically you s uh, what is meant here is that you simply cannot make it on your own. Sooner you need some people to help you and some people to support you. So it could be in a business way. Maybe you mm -hmm. need someone to take care of your branding or something like that. It could also be emotionally. Maybe you need uh, someone who can, you know, really help you emotionally. Yeah. It could be also like a mentor or a coach or something like that. So being an entrepreneur can be lonely. Is it true or false? I would say it is true. Um, I'd say it's true because... Um, Once you become an entrepreneur and and you don't have anyone doing the same thing in your close environment, like friends and family, it is difficult because sometimes when you need an advice, you know, even people who really want to help you, your close friends or your best friend or your mom or your sister, sometimes they might not understand the whole picture, you know, so it's it might not, not always be beneficial to ask them for an advice. Um, so then you're like, ah, I'll not ask her. Probably she won't even know, you know. So you're trying to figure out things on your own. And it gets tough um, when, when you don't have anyone to, you know, to, how to, how to say that, like to brainstorm with, you know. Um, I do attend some networking events just to um, just to hang out with people who are in the same position, you know, to get some advices, to get inspiration, to get motivation. Um, if you're starting, if you're whatever, having a startup and you're on your own, you do need help because it is hard, you know, knowing everything about marketing and sales and, 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 and whatever law and, and, and you know, taxes and, and it is it is hard so you probably will need an advice every now and then um if it comes to mentoring and coaching i do believe that every person who wants to be successful needs a mentor or a coach because that's one of the ways how you can grow how you can be challenged all the time and think of new ideas you know how to build up your brand how to grow how to get higher how to reach more goals so it gets lonely yeah i can imagine because when you work in a company first of all you have colleagues yeah. like you've mentioned someone to brainstorm with yeah so if you get an assignment or if you need to run a project or something first of all you have the colleagues that you yep. maybe maybe are collaborating on, maybe you can spar with them and so on. But you also have someone who sets a direction for you, your manager. True. Sometimes they are better in doing that. Sometimes they are worse in doing True. that. But in general, they can... There uh, is you, someone. Yeah, you can either be told that's what you need to do or you can be set a direction and so on, depending, yeah. you know, if you are more or less uh, lucky yeah. when it comes to leadership. But 
then you lose it all. You don't have someone who is telling you this is the direction we are going and you don't have someone you can spar with uh, on the progress yeah. and on the ideas and so on. So how do you cope with that kind of uh, loneliness as an entrepreneur? Hmm. I, there are days when I work from home and exactly what you're talking about, you know, getting up and you don't even have anyone to say good morning to. Like, oh, how was your weekend? You know, like all these questions that pop up Monday morning. Uh, and sometimes I am a person who I think works best alone. I do like teamwork and I see benefits of it. But if I have to be honest, if I can choose, I would be working on my on my own. But I do miss the part when you, you know, you just go downstairs to the canteen and you meet your colleague and you chit chat for five minutes. I do miss that a lot. So what I try to do is either call someone or try to have during the week, try to have like maybe one, two, up to three. I can't afford more um, like meetings with, with friends or with someone who's also an entrepreneur just to brainstorm and ask for an advice I think that's my way of 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 dealing with it but I also have someone coming home every evening um which is in this case is my boyfriend and and I know uh, I sometimes I feel sorry for him because you know me as a woman when he comes home I try to you know talk about my entire day and what happened and what which new directions I found or new tools to work with and sometimes I do feel sorry for him because he needs to take that on his chest but I have seen Claudia's uh, boyfriend. He has quite a big chest, so <laughs> he has uh, he has the space to uh, yeah uh, Good to for him. yeah uh, you got, for me yeah that. for both of you yeah. I think uh, you know Claudia and Paul. Paul was our um, our guest before. You may know him from uh, the magic and the tragic uh, of alcohol. So they are this amazing couple. And now we finally have Anna calling in, I think. You think. Hello. Yes, hello. Uh, am I calling the radio? You are calling the radio. This is You've Got Five Options with Marta and Marta. <laughs> Who uh, is calling? Uh, okay. Uh, hi, Marta. <laughs> Okay, I'm calling uh, you. This is Anna from You've Got Five Options, but obviously I'm not in the studio. Funny thing, I was listening to you girls on the radio, and I heard uh, something totally different that you were saying. So when you picked up, I was like, okay, this is freaky because they are saying something else at the radio, and I hear something else at the telephone. So I guess that uh, I'm learning now that there was some kind of a time elapse or something, right? Probably, yes. <clears throat> Could be. But I, I, I hope that we are online together now. Otherwise, this will be one awkward show. Uh, so we we definitely do hope that we are all online together. So, uh, guys, uh, this is You've Got Five Options show, finally with Marta and Anna and our lovely guest, Claudia. And we have just talked about the five facts of, uh, you know, uh, kissing your social life goodbye. Uh, you're an entrepreneur now. And Anna, great that you are calling. Have you heard us discussing those five facts? Yes, of course I did. I tuned in at two o'clock and I hope that the rest of people also did the same. Uh, the live stream is working, Marta. I just wanted to confirm. We were online from uh, on air from uh, two. Hello, Claudia. By the way, how are Hello, you? Hello, Anna. I'm very fine, thank you. I hope you are you... Do you are doing fantastic so far. You have a really, really nice radio voice. I have to tell oh, you. Thank you. Thank you are you. very welcome. But I was actually listening to you girls to those five facts that you were talking about, and I was thinking. Okay, so entrepreneurs are working 80 hours a week. They don't go out so much. Uh, they don't really have time for dating. Uh, they always are harassed by some people to give some free stuff, and <laughs> they feel lonely. So why the hell do we decide to become entrepreneurs in the first place? That is a good That's question. a question for you. That's a question for you, girls, because I have realized that you have to have simply a different mindset 
to be able to go through this because those are only five facts, you know, very few time, very few time for friends, for relationships and loneliness and still uh, many people are just doing it. So why do you think that is? Well, in my case, I think I see the bigger picture, you know? Yeah. I said at the beginning that my purpose is to to help women and and that's what I see, you know, all these hours when I'm working on the computer, all these mornings when I need to get up so early and, and go and train. That is what I see, first of all, you know, these, these women that hopefully I might be able to help, even if it's just one person or two people, you know. I know how it made me feel when I lost weight and how when I got my confidence back. I know how it made me feel and, and I want to pass it on to other women I want them to feel the same and I don't know I love it I love being busy you know I do yeah. love hanging out with my friends I do love spending quality time with my boyfriend I love having coffee with my sister you know but at the same time I, I, I just I see this big picture of me being able to help out hopefully hundreds of women in the future you know and and that's what I think that that's the that's what makes me yeah, uh, keep on going. I think, I think I, I totally agree with you. Um, I think one thing is, you know, especially when you love to help people and you see an impact yeah. you make with, an one, with a one or two people. Yeah. Uh, then, for instance, when you work in corporation, because for you guys, for all the listeners, if you can hear me, and I hope you can, I met Claudia when we were working in the same company. And Claudia, I was listening to your story today, and I also have heard that story a couple of times. And what I have to tell you is that when I found out, and we were talking about this, you know, that girl, Claudia, she's quitting her job. She's doing this because she wants to open her own business. I remember we were all like, oh, my God, (laughs) she has balls. It's like, you know, I didn't want to work in that company for, for a longer period of time, and I couldn't do it. And I remember it was, why? Because I was afraid, Mm. as simple as that. And Mm. I remember that we were thinking that that you have so much balls, you know, and uh, it was uh, like a huge wave of admiration for you because that's not uh, something that many people can do. And the ones that can do it are super brave. So also, you know, the story when you were saying that your hands were shaking and your heart was beating when you were writing that email, I could fully imagine what you've been through. So uh, thanks for sharing that because maybe some people think this is so easy, you know, she just quit, but it it requires some mental preparation and endurance to actually send that email and quit the job. It is, it is hard, but at the end of the day, you know, I got my life in my hands and then I sat there before sending that email and I'm like, do I really imagine myself sitting on this desk here for the next 10 years and being so miserable and out of energy? I'm like, no, Yeah, I can do better I, than that. And I think you are doing way do better than that. So, <laughs> thank uh, you. Thank you so much for, for that story and for sharing it. And I was also thinking when, when you just said that, you know, you can see the impact that you make on one or two people's life at the time, you know, that you can actually change it, which we cannot see in the corporations many times. But also, I I think there is something about, you know, fulfilling your higher purpose, something that, you know, you can actually really leave something valuable in this world behind you. And many times in big companies, we don't really feel an impact. And I think the other thing is, you know, you have something special to show to people, something unique, something that is a part of you. And in corporation, you will naturally not be able to to convey that because you will have to obey certain rules, certain uh, requirements, and that uh, that is very limiting. So, yeah, I, I think that uh, your story is great, but made me wonder, you know, especially with those five facts. If you had so many different, uh, you know, obstacles and difficulties why would you want to become an entrepreneur so uh, thank you for that and i would also like to add the last thing because girls i will allow you to go with the program i have a sixth fact for you and you can agree with me or not 
uh, it is very difficult to find a balance between your well-being and your business. For instance, when you are getting sick or when you are going to a hospital to have a small surgery (laughs) and you are absolutely convinced that you will be able to be early in the morning in another city to do the radio show. And I have realized that um, I, I, because girls, I was sure that I will be there. I, I had a surgery yesterday. I was scheduled for eight o'clock. Uh, but uh, due to some things in a hospital, I had to wait uh, six or seven hours for my turn. And until the late evening, I was convinced I will just take a good sleep and I will go. And I remember Marta sending me a message like, Anya, your health is your priority. Uh, you need to rest. We, you know, the show will not die without you, which is totally true. And also my boyfriend was saying the same. Listen, you have to prioritize your health. You cannot just, if you don't feel good, you just don't go. Nothing bad will happen. And so I have to convince myself that I have to rest. And I think uh, it's difficult to rest, especially when you are sick and you're going to think. Uh, that depend on you uh, because you think the world will end and you can still pull it off. What do you think about this fact, girl? Hmm. Well, it definitely gets complicated when you get sick. But in your case, luckily we got phones, so you can call and still be on the show. It gets more tricky with me. I can't train people over the phone. That's true. Yeah. But did you ever experience a situation when you were getting ill or sick? Let's say you had a cold and you were still thinking, okay, I will pull it off. Or at least if not the fitness classes, then I will at least open the computer oh, and yes. do something for my website. Or oh, I yes. will open the computer or I will call someone. Did you have that? Of course. I mean, yeah. everyone gets sick, you know, every now and then. And, yeah. uh, and, and I think you know being entrepreneur or a self-employed person you pretty much rely on yourself and your work so even if you have a headache even if you got whatever stomach pain or you get a fever you still want to open that computer and and do something you know like oh just half an hour or just 10 minutes or i'm just going to check that email and then that one email is turning into three hours on the computer so yes another uh, disadvantage of, of, of you know, being self-employed, yeah, you do not take care of yourself 100%. Yeah, I, I totally believe it was always difficult for me to have uh, have that kind of mindset. To, you need to really rest. Yeah. Also, when I was working in a company, but when I was sick, I was taking a sick day. And now it is very difficult for me to, even when I'm really not well, to stop. So I think that this is another quite uh, uh, true for me, real for me, and quite scary fact. I think I need to learn that, to to let go sometimes and take care of myself instead of, of all the other things that I'm doing. Well... If you really get, you know, if something happens to you and, and it's like health re- related, then you really don't have anyone to to continue yeah. or replace you, you know. So you do need to take care of yourself in order yeah. to, you know, to be able to to, to do all the things that, that you have. Um, in my case, if it comes to training, luckily um, living in Denmark, you know, people are very... And um, like they, they really understand once you call someone and you need to cancel the training or postpone it because you're ill, they are very mm-hmm. understanding. So that is yeah. that is an advantage of, you know, of living um, in the Danish society because people do understand it and, and they know that health is one of the most important things. So so this is this is a plus living in Denmark, you know. But yeah, with the, the you know, the, the home office thing, even if you seek and you still do it. This has to change, I believe, for both of us. So, so you better finish that <laughs> phone call, Anna. Yeah, and take well, some rest. you know, if if I would uh, not have uh, my two very close people next to me telling me that I need to prioritize my health, probably you would see me today. 
looking quite pale and quite weird sitting there next to you. So maybe this time it was better that I was able to to take a phone call and rest in a bed. And luckily Uh, you have a nice partner, radio partner, who told you to stay at home. Marta, it is awesome to hear you. And I would just like to say that you are doing great without me. So, yeah, it was good that I'm staying home today. And... uh, Girls, I hope that you will have nice rest of the show uh, and I will be as soon to you, of course, like always. Thank you, Anna, for calling in. It was really nice to have you, at least for a little bit. And of course, the health is always a priority. I do miss you. It is great to do those shows with you. So, Thank you. Uh, yeah, so definitely uh, I prefer to have them with you. But uh, the health is uh, is the most important thing that we have. So yeah. take a good care of yourself, girl. Yes, thank I you for, for joining us. And, and please do take some rest and take care. You are, you are most welcome, girls. And I will listen to you now on the radio. Bye-bye. 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 Okay, so it was nice to have Anna with us. And now we will move to the third part of the show. Uh, which is uh, something that we do every time before each of our live shows. We ask five questions uh, to our followers uh, and uh, we get results from them. And we will now have those five questions that we will tell you what were the results from our followers, but also we will hear Claudia's uh, uh, opinion. So question number one, is it okay to cut people off from your life? when they don't support your dreams. The moment of truth. (laughs) So the results are very Mm 50-50, exactly 50-50. So uh, it's a yes and a no, because that's a a close question. But what do you, Claudia, think about that? This is a tricky one. I think 50-50 is actually the right answer. I think... You know, you might have friends who are like, Claudia, I think what you're doing is stupid and I would never do it, but it's your life. Do what you feel is best for you, you know? And we're still friends, even though you might not think that my idea is good, but we're still friends. We're still hanging out and we're still having a nice time. We can still go out for coffee and dinner and and have have fun together and, you know, still stay friends. I might not ask her or him for an advice, you know, business related advice, because I know she or he doesn't like the idea or doesn't like what I'm doing, but we can still be friends. You know, if, if someone is respecting my life and what I'm doing, then, you know, I'll return the same. I'll respect his choices and let's be friends. I think it's different when someone is like, no, this is stupid, don't do it, and, and, and starts with the negative talk and starts to discourage you, like, you shouldn't be doing this, or why are you still doing it? Or, you know, like, five months later, like, oh, you're putting so much energy in your social media, but no one even likes your post. Like, come on, just quit that. Go back to the corporate life, you know? I think that's... I don't know if to say if it's okay to, to cut it off, but, but you know, you, you kind of need to put some limits some boundaries to that and and if someone is really not respecting your choices and really trying to put you down or you know discourage you from what you're doing then i feel like maybe we shouldn't be friends after all so so there are certain situations when it's simply good for you yes to say goodbye to some of your friends so when someone is like really putting you down yeah that's if it's too negative, if it's too much negative energy, then I'm out because I don't want this to influence my work and my choices and, you know, and, and, and kind of re-question myself like, am I really doing the right thing? Maybe I should have stayed at that job. Maybe I should have done this or that, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Question number two. What comes first? Your dream career or your family slash social life. So that you have a moment to think about it for mm-hmm. yourself. I will tell you that uh, we've had quite some different answers to choose from. And 66% of our responde- respondents said they both come first. Balance is the key. And 
Then the second, uh, qu uh, the second answer that was selected by 33% is depends on period in my life. And no one responded, no one took an opportunity like, you know, family, social life always comes first or my dream career. If I don't feel fulfilled, I'm unhappy. No one either answered my dream career at this point in my life. I don't really need a family or social life to begin with or I'm unable to choose. So it was really about a balance or simply it depends on the period yeah. in my life. So how do you feel about that? There's something in, in each of the answers, you know. Of course, balance is the perfect solution, you know. But you can't always choose or whatever, 30-30%, you know, like job and then your family and then your social life. It is very hard because sometimes your work might require you way more. Sometimes you might have something going on in the family and then you really need to put more energy in there. So I think it's, of course, balance would be the perfect, you know, the ideal situation, but it's not always possible. Life is life, after all. Um, and then there was the other answer you said it was... Um, it depends on the situation, right? Yeah, so it depends on the period in my life. Yeah. Um, let me give you an example. Like, you just graduated and you're looking for a job. And you're putting so much energy and, and effort into, you know, into fi finding something. Um, and then maybe your friends start like, oh, you don't have time to, to see me anymore. Let's hang out and let's go out. And you're like, no, I don't really want to spend my Saturday night drinking because... I have whatever job interview on Monday morning and, you know, I need to prioritize that. I think it's it really depends on the situation because if you're in a situation when you really need to put more attention and effort into your work or into looking for a job or maybe you're in a period of exams at school or whatever, or maybe you're doing work, school and, and coaching at the same time. And, you know, it does re depend on the on the situation. But there was uh, one of and uh, there was one answer that was also interesting for me. If you could, so uh, there was family, social life always comes first. Mm -hmm. My dream career. If I don't feel fulfilled, I'm unhappy. Mm -hmm. And then at this point in my life, I don't really need a family, social life to begin with. I think it's the, the fulfillment um, because if you're really unhappy about what you do in your life, how can you, um, how to say that, like, if you don't love what you're doing, if you don't feel fulfilled and, and if you're like all the time angry about it or you feel dissatisfied or disappointed with yourself, then it's very difficult to show love to other people, to show love to your family and your friends, you know, if you're really unhappy about yourself and your life. You know, you at some point, maybe you will either start, start blaming your environment or your, someone in your family like, oh, I didn't do it because of whatever, my father or my sister or my boyfriend, you know. Um, I, I, I like that answer because I, I, I do feel like it's your life at the end of the day and you only have one life. So live it the way you want it and, and you know, try to do everything to, to be happy with yourself and with what you do and, 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 and feel the fulfillment. And I think that this is a great opportunity to jump uh, to one of the next questions, because the, uh, one of the questions that we've also asked was, do you have problems with balancing your work and family or social life? And 40% uh, of the people said, yes, I have a big challenge with that. And sometimes it's too much to handle. Another 40% said, I had it in the past, but now I got better at it and also 20% answer yes and can some and can someone please teach me <laughs> and then no one chose an answer nope because I focus only on work no one chose nope because I focus only on my family social life and no one answered ha 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 if you find someone who can balance that give me their number <laughs> <laughs> so because as you say like if you go too much in if you like quit your fulfillment, your career, whatever, and you try to be there for your close ones, you can get angry or resentful yeah. and so on. If you, on the other hand, maybe go so much into your career that you don't have the time for your close people, you can also lose something important in of your course. life. So it yeah. is somehow about balance. So how is it for you now? Do you have problems with balancing? I thought that I did have that problem back then when I was working, you know, long hours and, and driving. 
But I feel I feel like it got worse right now. I do find myself saying no to to meeting people, saying no to coffee, saying no to dinners or parties. And it is hard, of course. But at the end of the day, right now, every one hour of my work pays my bills, brings food on the table, you know, uh, pays gas for my car so that I could drive to, to train with people. And even, you know, as simple as spending five minutes making a post on Facebook, because that post might bring you a client, you know. So every single minute of my work right now is important. So I do work every day and I don't have the A2 whatever for job anymore. I do work more than that. Especially in my work, I work when other people don't work because I need to train when people have free time, you know. So if it comes to my training, I start my days after three when people are off work or weekends. And then the mornings, it would be like, oh, then I have all the time in the world to do what I want or, you know, or meet my my friends or family. Well, they are at work, first of all. And second of all, I've got all these other things to do. Um, so I, I do struggle sometimes. I feel like, you know, my sister moved to Denmark two years ago and I feel like we almost never see each other and and and. We, I, I moved recently a little bit outside of Aarhus, but before we used to live like 10 minutes away from each other. And I wasn't able to see, to see her as often as I wished, you know, to, to do so. So I do struggle, but sometimes, yeah. and, and my boyfriend Paul is also very good at this, like, no, just leave it. Go out and have fun for once, you know, you never do it anymore. So it's it's all about a mindset. It's all about how you see it and, and sometimes you need to prioritize what's more important for you going for your sister's birthday or staying at work you know doing your your, your daily tasks so it is a challenge it is a challenge the right it is a challenge okay. but it seems like all, all the participants in the survey they they, they have the same challenge yeah. same problem yeah, yeah. Or, or or had it in the past and got better yeah. or still have it and, yeah. and so on. So now comes in quite a big question. So have you ever lost a friend or a partner because of the time and effort that you put in pursuing your dreams? I don't think I lost someone like for good, but I can see that the connection is not the same with some of my friends. I can see that because I don't have time and they might not fully understand that we don't talk so often we don't we simply don't have the same connection anymore and it is sad but but unfortunately that's life so our respondents 33% of oh, yeah, them I forgot about yeah, it they <laughs> said yes yes how many Three, 33 33 yeah and 66 said no mm -hmm. and we had one comment Uh, in a way, yes, some contacts just faded away. Yeah. So it was not like directly you cut off someone. No. Uh, on, yeah, yeah on but you just lost the connection. You just, yeah, faded away. It just faded away. Yeah. And then we have the last question. How much time do you averagely spend A, working and B, with your friends and family? And then we got uh, the answers For working, uh, 70, uh, 80 hours uh, was the majority. I'm not sure I'm getting the... Um, okay, so we ha I think maybe 70 people said 80 hours and uh, 30 people said 40 hours. And um, then with your friends and family, uh, 40 hours uh, was the average answer. And uh, yeah, how, how is it for you? How much time do you average to spend working? We know that was... Is it really 80 hours or that you spend on average working or... Yeah, 70, 80, I would say. On average. Yeah. And how much time do you feel you spend with your friends and family? Mm, half of it, maybe. Half of it, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
And uh, compared to your previous life where you were having this corporate job, were you managing to spend more time with no. your friends and family? No, because I was getting up early at five in the morning, going to the gym, going to work. First of all, driving for one hour. Then I was at work. And then after that, I um, back then I had fitness as my part time. So I either had classes in the evening or training with people. So then I would come home late, you know, around nine in the evening. And then you make food, you make dinner, prepare your food for the next day. And then, you know, at 10, you're totally done. So you go to bed. So in a way, maybe it kind of got better because back then, the weekends, I just wanted to rest, you know, from the entire tiring week. And now I feel like, It is a little bit easier, maybe, um, because I I still come home late. But <laughs> at that point of time, previously, you were yeah. entrepreneur just on top of your corporate job. <laughs> kind of, maybe. Or maybe getting yourself, <laughs> getting preparing there. yourself. Yeah, getting uh, there. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, Claudia, thank you so much for uh, your time here today. The time flies. Uh, hey, we, does. Yeah. I just looked at the time and I'm like, hmm, okay. Yeah, the, the time flies and we have to uh, let our uh, lovely Julienne prepare for her live uh, show that is starting very soon at 3 p.m. Right. So, uh, Claudia, thank you so much for being here today. Do Would you mind just telling us how can li our listeners find you if they would like to train with you? Well, they can find me on Facebook, Claudia's Fit. Claudia is spelled with K. Uh, that you can find me on Instagram, claudia.adamitz. You can send me an email. I believe the girls will share my email address, right? We will share everything. So, of course, Perfect. if you don't remember, you will be able to find all the information about Claudia at the5options.com. Perfect. So, thank you so much for today. Thank you, our listeners. We hope you enjoyed the show and... Goodbye. Thank you very much for having me. Goodbye. Bye bye. Hello, everyone. You are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next.